Hello everybody, welcome to this video. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kylie, if you didn't know. Today I wanted to film a uh, like mid-year reading video um, with the freak out tag questions just because I feel like it hits all the bases. I've been feeling rather uninspired. One of my cameras is broken, so I'm using a different camera that, that works and is great, but it is not my favorite. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to film something. And of course, it's been beautiful weather in Chicago and today it is raining and super cloudy. And so it literally looks like winter in here, um, but that is okay. We will survive. I haven't been really consistently making videos, which wasn't the plan. Ultimately, my goal has been to hopefully make like one video a week, but I haven't been really historically successful with that. Usually it's one every two weeks on average, maybe three. Um, but hopefully I will have more time in the near future to make videos. And I would like to make more vlogs. But I, I don't know, like, I guess, you know, in theory, I should make videos that I like to watch because I feel like that ultimately just transfers well to what viewers desire because I myself am a viewer of book videos. But I don't know if anybody has any ideas for me or requests or things please let me know because i don't have any inspiration and yeah i would i like have the desire to make videos but i just don't know what of so i need a little help on that and i'm just gonna be honest and i'm outsourcing um to my audience so thank you in advance um and Anyways, I'm just gonna get into the questions here. How has your 2024 reading year gone so far? I would say it's gone pretty well. It's gone to plan. I was really front heavy and have kind of weaned off. So I was way ahead of schedule according to Goodreads for the first like three to four months. And May and June, I have not really been reading. and. I've been reading, but not at the rate that I was. And now I'm on the Elena Ferrante kick of it all. And so I've been reading the quartet. And I just finished the second book and I'm loving it, but it's just taking me a while because while it is a very plotty sort of series, first of all, they're pretty long or longer than the typical fiction novel that I read or on the longer end rather. I still find them to be a bit dense. Not that it's particularly difficult to read, but I find that, I don't know, I just, it's taking a second. So I think the only book that I read in June was the second book, um, The Story of a New Name. Usually when I am doing well, I read less. Um, so maybe that's like a good sign. That's what my friends seem to pick up on. So when I'm reading a ton and ton of books, like just keep an eye on me. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that. so you can only imagine the beginning of the year was a little rough for me. Also, I'm just gonna bring this special guest for a second because I feel like he deserves some screen time. But um, yeah, anyways, I would say overall going well. I think I've read like 20, 25, maybe 26 books. Let me check. I have read 26 books. So, and I would like to read 50, which I think is a feasible goal. So the second question is, what is the best book you've read so far in 2024? Um, I would have to say The Passion, according to GH by Clarice Lispector. Talked about her at length on this channel, um, but... It is a novel, but I would like to categorize it as a very um, experimental sort of novel structure in the sense that it most closely aligns potentially with that of a novel categorically, but it could also just be prose with a loose plot stringing throughout the 200 something pages. 
I loved it. I ate it up. I love Lispector. It's very heady, very interior, very thoughtful. And yeah, I feel like Clarice Lispector just captures what it is to be living in your own head in the sense that a lot of life comes from the internal processing of events that occur as opposed to the physical tangible events themselves and yeah because this whole plot is centered around this woman who is in her apartment and she goes to her cupboard and sees a cockroach and she has all these thoughts that follow that's all but the entire novel is basically her thinking in her head and um, slight movements here and there. I would say something about Lispector's voice just like deeply resonates with me. I definitely would like to read at least one more Lispector this year, but I don't really feel in a rush to go through um, her works, uh, but... Yeah, I'm glad that I found that one and picked that one up. Best sequel you've read so far in 2021. The default answer would be The Story of a New Name by Elena Fronte because it is the only sequel I've read so far this year. Um, it is the second book in the Neapolitan Quartet and I just finished it last month. And I mean, it was fantastic. Uh, I would say it was really long, not even like pages wise, but it was just really long in the sense that there were so many minute events covered within the book that things kind of got convoluted for me a little bit. I'm not even gonna lie, but I started watching the HBO series, um, which is fun. So, and I know that the fourth s season is coming out soon. So yeah, I'm hoping to kind of watch the respective seasons and read the books like in tandem or rather the books first and the seasons, you know what I mean. But yeah, I would say that is the best sequel. New release you haven't read yet, but want to. My interest wasn't initially peaked to the extent where I was going to go out and buy the book. But now that everyone has talked about this said book on YouTube, I just like feel like I should hop on and like read it because everyone has said that Miranda July's voice, um, and the book I speak of is All Fours by Miranda July's, um, but it's just a very topical book in the sphere of YouTube that I consume, um, and everyone has had overall positive thoughts. I actually haven't seen any of her films, but I've listened to the Kajillion Air soundtrack I think it's fantastic um but yeah maybe miranda july is somebody i need to get more into because everyone seems to like her um and by everyone i mean the people's whose reading taste i mostly align with so yeah maybe perhaps all fours by miranda july most anticipated release for the second half of the year i have two answers for this intermezzo by sally rooney um and uh, Jenny Slate's new book and I have to look up what it's called life form little weirds I read when I was like 21 or 22 and Just stuck with me so deeply. There's something about the whimsy and her voice and just I Don't know. There's just something about her that captures kind of the magic of being alive but also the sadness that exists within that said magic. Um, and I don't know, I think it encapsulates the way I view my own life very well. And so, yeah, I love Marcel the Shell with shoes on. I also really like her stand-up comedy and I'm really excited to read Life Form when it does come out. And then Intermezzo by Sally Rooney, that's kind of an obvious one, low-hanging fruit. I didn't ask for an arc, because I didn't think I would get one, um, but maybe I should have, I don't know. Um, but also, I, I'm i not necessarily in a rush to get my grimy little mitts on it. I think I can wait till it comes out in the fall. But um, yeah, I think it'll be good because I read Beautiful World, Where Are You? when I had first moved to Chicago. And 
intermezzo will be coming out when I have moved to a new city um, that will eventually be revealed. I think it'll be kind of like nice little bookends. Biggest disappointment of 2024, so 2024? 2024 so far. Um, <laughs> disappointment. I wouldn't say this was necessarily a disappointment, but a book that I didn't like as much as I thought I would was I Wait the Devil's Coming by Mary McLean. I've also briefly talked about my thoughts about this book in a wrap up video, um, but it is um, basically a collection of diary entries of Mary McLean, which was like in late her late teens. Um, in the 1920s, she was living in like rural Montana or something of the sort. And yeah, it's just about her thoughts and her life and how she thinks about things that happened to her as, you know, usually the sort of topics a journal would um, cover. Um, that being said, I thought I would like it more than I did. I think I just eventually got peeved by her. Like I found her to be a little annoying by the end. And I don't know what that says about me, but she was, it was very redundant. And I suppose, you know, she doesn't really owe the reader to not be redundant, if that makes sense, because they're just journal entries. It's not like a structured novel or nonfiction, work of nonfiction. Dare I say Holden Caulfield-esque in the sense that she was like, I'm better than everyone, like no one gets me kind of vibe, which in a sense, like I get it, like been there, felt that, but it just feels a little out of touch sometimes. Where it's like I get it like you're kind of tortured internally and you don't know what's going on and you like think you're too smart for your own good but I would say that the biggest surprise of 2024 so far honestly the days of abandonment by Elena Ferrante that was the first Ferrante that I've read um I read that in May and then I quickly started the Neapolitan Quartet right after I finished that because I absolutely ate the Days of Abandonment up. I thought that I was going to like it, but I ended up loving it. I would say a part of Elena Ferrante's voice just really clicks for me. There aren't many authors that I feel like that with. I would say the authors that I do are Virginia Woolf, Clarissa Spector, and then probably Elena Ferrante would also be added. So yeah, I don't know. I think that she captures womanhood so accurately and the part of anger and frustration and societal expectations and how that inevitably kind of leads a woman to hysteria in her own right. There's just a very brutally honest way and approach to like the way that Elena Ferrante fleshes out her characters and I find that refreshing but TLDR Love her. The Days of Abandonment surprised me. Favorite new author new to you or debut, Elena Ferrante. I already spoke about her just like right now, so I will spare everybody further thoughts. Newest fictional crush. I don't think I have any. I've thought about this. So I'm gonna say not applicable. Book that made you cry. I haven't cried at any of the books I've read this year. I would say Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. At the end, I was like kind of welling up a little bit because I just found it really touching. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but I did find the ending of that book very touching and heartfelt and honest. The Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. I also felt the same. Some of the writing kind of took me out. I would I wouldn't say Rebecca Mackay is like the most poetic, like lyrical writer. I feel like kind of lyricism of certain writing is what speaks to me um, emotionally, that is. So I don't know. I feel like I just didn't really get that with The Great Believers. But I did think that the overall storyline was very touching. Book you saw on TikTok and regret reading. I don't know. I don't really like choose books off of TikTok. So I don't think I have like one that I, I don't really have one that I even really regret reading. I feel like I've 
picked things like well for myself Oop, cheers yeah i would say i don't know none most beautiful book you bought this year i will need to go get that i will be right back i would have to say this book by audrey lord is the most beautiful book that i've bought this year i bought it at mcnally jackson in williamsburg when i went on a new york trip with my friends and it was like covered in plastic wrap and it's i i mean the print is very nice the design and the color and the spine even i love the way there's like kind of a portrait of her up top i just think it's very minimal but there's like distinct color choices and i just find it a very pleasing book to look at and i'm sure it will be an even better book to read eventually. Ow. Oh, I love Audrey Lord. She's fucking amazing. What are the books you need to read by the end of the year? I have too many on my physical TBR that um, I could list off the top of my head. So I would say my physical TBR, anything that's on there. Um, it's fair game. Because where I'm moving, I'm not gonna be bringing most of my books. So I'm trying not to buy more books and just read what I have so that if I want to read it in the near future, I don't have to go buy it again because I wasn't able to bring it, if that makes sense. Favorite video you've made so far in 2024? That's a good question. Maybe a favorite video? Probably my New York video, just because it was, I don't know, kind of, it's kind of sentimental to me, um, just as far as like capturing that trip with my friends. And I want to make more videos like that in the future. <laughs> I just don't really like filming when I'm doing stuff. Or at least filming with the knowledge that it will go on the internet. So that's kind of a block that I have with like vlogging almost. Because it feels very like personal. But I do like want to because I like looking back on the little moments and clips and whatnot but i think i'm just trying to find the balance of what i want to share and what i don't a video you thought would flop but did well probably um oh my march wrap up did way better than i thought i would it was a video that i filmed very quickly i for the lack of um a better way to describe i was going through it and i think you could tell in my voice <laughs> but i wanted to talk about the books that i'd been reading um and what i wanted to read and it did well and i was like kind of vulnerable in that video and i think a lot of people engaged in a way that felt very meaningful to me yeah that one i think might be one of my most viewed videos <laughs> any upcoming videos you're excited to make like i kind of mentioned before probably something of the vlog sort but i also talked in the beginning of the video how i just don't know what to make so please tell me any channel goals before the end of the year i would say maybe hit 5k i'm almost at 4k and i think 5k would be a great milestone for me i also am going to be annoying about this because this is the thing that i care most about but it's not necessarily my channel, but I have a sub stack and right now I have like, I think nearly 200 subscribers on my sub stack, but it would mean so, so much to me. It would mean like my whole heart if you were to subscribe and potentially read my sub stack posts. Um, Forest Degrees, maybe reaching like 300 sub stack subscribers too. That would be awesome. Those are all the questions. I pulled these questions from Renee, or so I read this book. Um, I watched her video, watched Nathan's video. I've watched a bunch of these videos. I will tag those who I've watched down below. Anyways, that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you when I see you.